That's what I'm talking about. Wait. Okay, now. From the beginning. Hit it, boys. Hey everyone, welcome into the Arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast. This is episode 102. I'm your host, Xpat, along with my co-hosts, Burley of Burleyman Gaming and Turn-Based Carl. How you guys doing? Carl, how you doing? Yeah? Good, good. Clearing out the place. Yeah, it's looking a little uh, empty back there, yeah? It's pretty pretty empty. <laughs> yeah, I got like, like where's space the consoles? here, like yeah. a desk. I can, I can actually like reach all over my desk. There's nothing like to block me anymore. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Burley, how you doing, man? Yeah, I'm doing good. Doing good? Awesome. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing good. I've been really busy, though. Uh, you know, my, my daughter in, you know, uh, on Monday, this coming Monday, she's leaving for Canada. She's leaving for Vancouver. She'll be on Vancouver Island, yeah, you know, for ten months. Yeah, you know? so she's, uh, you know, she's got to get up really early on Monday to go out to the airport, and then she flies to Vancouver, and that'll take about eight and a half hours from from Japan, from Narita Airport here. And then after that, in Vancouver, she's got to stay in the airport until her connecting flight for another nine hours. Oh damn! So she's going to be sitting by herself in in Vancouver Airport for nine hours to wait for her connecting flight to get over there. So, but uh, yeah, she'll be all right. I told her just uh, sleep, uh, you know, watch some stuff on you know on the internet or whatever, and uh, and go check out the duty free shops, you know, and just you know walk around a lot. So, yeah, just load right. up a bunch of the episodes of the podcast on your phone. That's right. And be all good. That's right. Yeah, she's going to be she's going to be promoting the show and all of our other content on the Arena Productions like crazy when she gets to Canada. All those Canadian high school kids are going to be watching us for for a long time to come, I'm sure. But anyway, uh we got a great show for you today. We're going to be talking about Sony uh acquiring Savage Game Studios uh and the implications of that. Uh, and then, of course, Sony also um, in the news still this week. Uh, they're not going to be at TGS. We're going to be talking about that. I mean, their their indie games are going to be there, but they're not going to have a presence, which is, you know, yeah, it's interesting. We're going to talk about that. Uh, Halo Infinite split screen co-op has been canceled. We're going to be talking about that as well. And then Call of Duty will become part of Xbox Game Pass, but launch on PlayStation on day one. So what are the what are the implications of that? We will talk about that as well as our topic of the show of all of these uh, uh, industry wide continual consolidations and, uh, you know, uh, what that's going to, uh, you know, say for the future of gaming. Uh, We're going to talk about that in our topic of the show. And then, of course, our uh, picks of the week for new game releases uh, for the week of uh, September 5th through the 11th. So. Anyway, before we talk about the games that uh, we've been playing this past week, and before we get into the weekly news beat topics, uh, here's a brief word about where you can find the podcast. Before the crew discuss what they have been playing, this episode of The Arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast, in audio and video formats, will be going to Patreon in early access for one day after being recorded. So if you would like to support the show and become a patron at the entry tier one level at $1 per month, and get early access to every episode in audio and video formats, exclusive post-show content in video format when recorded, as well as watch or listen ad-free, please visit patreon.com slash the arena underscore podcast for further details. Weekly on Sundays, the podcast will be uploaded to all free podcast services, where you can find us on any podcast app for iOS or Android, and in video format on our YouTube channel, The Arena Productions. For the audio version, just download your favorite podcast app and search for The Arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast. Subscribe, follow us, post a review and leave us questions, comments, and feedback if you like, if that feature is available there, and spread the word about the podcast. We also have a Discord called The Arena Podcast, 
where you can join and chat with the Arena Podcast community. And the podcast audio website is at thearenapodcast.podbean.com where you can follow us and leave questions and comments as well. For all information regarding the podcast and our entertainment and pop culture related content, along with our blog and forums, visit the official website of The Arena Productions at www.thearenaproductions.com. Finally, you can also follow us on Twitter at The Arena, A-M-P-G-N-P, as well as on Instagram at The Arena underscore podcast. Now, back to the show. All right, guys, uh, let me go ahead and start. Uh, I, like I said uh, in the opening, I didn't have much time to play games this week because my daughter is getting ready to, to, to move to Canada for, for school. But uh, I did start two games, and they're now on Game Pass. Uh, Immortals Phoenix Rising, uh, of course, uh, from Ubisoft and uh, uh, Ubisoft Quebec. Um, played a little bit of it. You know, the game tells a story narrated by Prometheus to, to Zeus. Uh, and of course, it's uh, it's in third person mode. Uh, basically, you know, it's it, it kind of reminds me of uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild in a sense. Uh, so I started that. And then I also started a game called Immortality on Game Pass oh, yeah. as yeah. well. Uh, it's based on a fictional model turned actress and uh, it spans. Uh, she like makes like three different movies between like 1969 and 1999, but were never released. Uh, so yeah, I've just started that and uh, it's, it's been getting really, really good reviews. Uh, mm-hmm. So uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to continuing that when I get a chance later this week. So uh, um, yeah, those are the two games that I focused on. Uh, to start at least <laughs> because I've been really busy with uh, family stuff this past week. But anyway, uh, Burley, what, yeah, go ahead. That Carl. What's that? Is it, it was the theme on immortality. Is it, is it like a thriller suspense horror? I feel like it would be in that category somewhere. It's, it's a, it's like a, a fictional mystery type of story. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, it's the reason why I downloaded it is because I've, you know, seen there's been a lot of good reviews on it, so I uh, want to give it a yeah, try. It's got excellent reviews. They yeah. they made which was the other game they made was it Heart Story or something? There, there's another one of those popular FMB yeah. games more recently that they did that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to playing more of it and uh, Immortals: Phoenix Rising. Uh, you know, uh, I'm looking forward to playing more of that as well too. So anyway, Burley, what have you been playing this past week? I've been playing a few different games. Uh, continue, uh, the shock to no one, Fall Guys, still my daily addiction. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I need help. The people, morning please. addiction, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, I, the morning he keeps addiction. Telling yeah. us, like he needs help, but we just keep laughing at it. Yeah, you guys, no, you guys aren't going to help me. I'm. I, I'm more pointing this to the viewers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, all of you viewers out there, if you have any comments about uh, about Fall Guys and are, are you still playing that game, let us know in the comments. But anyway, go ahead, Burley. Yeah. Um, I've also been continuing on with Triangle Strategy, really yep. enjoying that on my personal time. And then for streaming, uh, mm-hmm. I've been continuing uh, lo- uh, continuing God of War, re-going through that. That's been a lot of fun. I actually fought my first ever Valkyrie in that game. Nice. It took like 15 attempts, but I beat the damn thing. <laughs> now it's mm-hmm. like, now I have that little chip on my shoulder thinking, okay, one down, eight to go. Now that I think I've got this, I can easily do this for the rest. And then one person <laughs> in my chat is like, oh, you poor, poor fool. <laughs> <laughs> really, I'm going to say, I have confidence you can beat all of them. You know, after you've taken one down, you've un- you figured out like the idea. Like they have different like techniques, they have different uh, patterns, right? And attacks you have to yeah. learn. But ultimately, I think they're they're all fairly manageable, except the last one, which will be very very hard. <laughs> oh, that one! I'm sure I'm going to have to buy a stone, the resurrection stones, because I didn't use that. Yeah, yeah. So. All right. So, Carl, what have you been uh, playing, man? Uh, mostly Expeditions of Rome, though. Yeah, I've been pretty busy, so I haven't played as much as I've really wanted to. I played a little bit more Soul Hackers too, also since we've been on. Cool. Um, I don't know that like 
much has changed on that uh, from what I, I mean. I got more into like seeing the the rest of the world, like other locations you can walk around. Mm -hmm. And um, there's like some side quest stuff that they introduce you to that you can do. All of it seems okay. You know, like, I'm, I'm still like, I'm interested still with the story where those where that's going to go the characters so far a couple of them like i like but i do have to i will put more time into that once i'm once i'm traveling i'm gonna i'm gonna try to set up the xbox at the hotel and, and play that <laughs> i can't wait um, to hear how, what you say about that how it works out we'll see yeah, you know we'll what see. the best, best travel xbox, xbox is a series s yeah well i'm gonna I'm gonna have plenty of space with the truck, so I'll, I'll, I'll be able to put my uh, Series X in there <laughs> somewhere. Cool. But uh, Expeditions yeah. Rome still still doing good with that, still loving it. Uh, mm -hmm. I finally got to something different where you it's like I, I, I guess now I kind of like spoiled myself slightly, but like there's I didn't realize that there's multiple regions that you're gonna be conquering in this game. So like mm -hmm. I just finished the first region, mm -hmm. uh, which is Asia Minor. And uh, at the end of it, when you get to do this sort of siege mission, which is pretty cool, it's like one of those things where they let you set up two separate, um, you know, teams to do two separate tasks at once, mm -hmm. and you have to like, you know, one team is sort of like a distraction, doing something at the gates, and the other team is going to sabotage something, something somewhere else, and then they kind of meet up together, and then they join up. And you're using like every using. This is the first time like you get to use, I don't know, like. 10 or so units at once maybe, maybe a little maybe more i don't know yet a, a lot it's, it's like way more than the usual which is pretty cool it was it's a long sequence of several battles in a row that that went yeah. for a while like that but uh but i enjoyed it i loved it so cool cool i like when they they change things up a bit these type of games and add something new like that yeah yeah mm. all righty all right it's time to jump into the weekly news beat so this week obviously Sony's been busy on the acquisition front again, but what's really interesting, and of course for all of you uh, viewers, uh, I put the link to the story from PlayStation.com's blog below for you. You can check this out. What's really interesting about Savage Game Studios, though, is that they are a mobile development studio, specifically for mobile games. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and read a part of this uh, from the... Uh, the blog here uh, from Herman Holtz, who's the head of PlayStation Studios, and he's talking about the acquisition. He says, uh, hello, PlayStation Nation. Today we announced that we have entered into a definitive agreement to acquire Savage Game Studios, a hugely talented team of creatives with many years of experience making some of the most popular mobile games enjoyed by players around the world. They were founded a few years ago with the goal of fearlessly exploring bold new ideas we share their tireless ambition to innovate along with a continued drive to expand our audience and bring PlayStation to more people than ever before, making them a perfect fit to join PlayStation Studios. So that is from Herman Holtz, welcoming in Savage Game Studios. So I'm going to I'm going to throw it to you guys here. I mean, it looks like PlayStation is really, really trying to start to focus more on mobile gaming. They're they're going to try to. Uh, you know, uh, seize the mobile market in a sense. Uh, and this is the beginning of that uh, because uh, Savage Game Studios is, yeah, uh, they, they make some pretty quality stuff. So, uh, yeah. And it's interesting how Herman Holtz is saying, you know, to, to bring these games to more people than ever before. <laughs> but then again, uh does he mean to more people than ever before or to more PlayStation players than ever before? Uh, we shall see. Uh, because you know how uh, Sony has been recently when it comes to, you know, acquiring studios and then, of course, uh, making them exclusive. Uh, and we're going to talk more about that on the Xbox side of things later on. But uh, anyway, what are your guys' feelings on this acquisition? How big of a thing is this for Sony to get... Uh, Savage Game Studios. Uh, Burley, I'll start with you on this. What do you think, man? Uh, this, 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 a uh, this is a move we all should have kind of seen coming. That they're eventually they were going to go into the mobile market. Mm -hmm. It's not something I like because I am not a I am not a mobile gaming fan mm -hmm. because so many mobile gaming is just all pay to win and just 
so it's like are we going to get this? Like, I haven't really played any of the Savage mobile games, so I can't say if they are pay-to-win games. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I don't want to have, like, just basically reskin of other, like, mobile games. But, like, we'll put a... Uh, we'll put an Astro Playroom skin, Astro skin over this mobile game to make it feel kind of like Astro, but charge you 10 bucks to buy it. And then you need to buy... Because it's triple A mobile, so it's going to be triple the loot boxes and all that and the cash grabs that you're going to have to buy. Yeah, well, that's what PlayStation's probably trying to cash in on, I think. Oh, yeah. With that. Well, the, so. mo the mobile market is ridiculous of how much oh, money it Oh, especially makes. out here. Oh, yeah. In Japan, yeah. It's, 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 it's the biggest market. So. Yeah. so, Carl, your thoughts on this? You know, clearly there's a reason you haven't played any Savage Game Studios mobile games. Would you know what that reason is? No, I don't. They haven't made any. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, they were founded in, wonk, in wonk. sometime in 2020. Yeah. And <laughs> apparently it's they have some people, I don't know, there must be only a few people working there who have worked on major mobile games for other companies, right? Yeah. But as it currently stands, they haven't made a single thing yet. And... If you go to their website, they are hiring for literally every important position. So like <laughs> talent acquisition specialists, AI programmers, senior IT administrator, technical director, art director, senior environment artist, QA engineer, senior user interface designer. So, so what you're saying, what you're what you're trying to say, Carl, is you, you think that Sony wants this studio to start making triple A console type games now. As no, no, they said they're gaming. They said they're gonna work on a triple A open world like mobile game. Does that make sense though? <laughs> I mean, Whatever that is. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> I think I think Sony's probably of the mind of like, can we get our own Genshin impact? Yeah, okay. And yeah. they yeah. they bought this studio who has some experienced people and they're gonna build this place up to make whatever you know are they going to make original ips or are they going to adapt some sort of sony ip into a mobile version whatever they do i mean but this i don't know why this is a big story because if you if i feel a lot of people didn't look into who savage game studios was they're nobodies like yeah they might have people who work for other companies but like they've done nothing they don't even have a full staff they're not even like it's nothing. This is a, this is really nothing until who knows? So, it's going to be like years before anything comes out of this place. So, so you're saying Sony bought them for really, really cheap, like a buck fifty? Just because they have yeah. they have no 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 one. <laughs> Why do you think they didn't announce the the value? Right? <laughs> because it you know, was nothing. I got I got ten American dollars in my pocket. I own your company now. I'm thinking these guys, these guys are making out like bandits. They probably got more money than they've ever, they've ever had. They would have expected. <laughs> and they're like, this is a great, they're like, you want to buy a Sony? Really? You're like, all right. Okay. Sure. We'll sign. Where, where, where yeah. do we sign? <laughs> <laughs> well, from what they say, like in the article, the, a lot of the, the staff at this studio that they have now supposedly worked at other bigger studios before. So they're bringing yes, that uh -huh. experience over. Yeah. So. But I'm assuming it's only a handful of like people at this point, Maybe. because th they haven't produced anything and they're still hiring for all these significant positions. Hmm. I made the start button for this game. Okay, you're hired. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, then that's another thing. Like, <laughs> we, do we know what level of you know development these individuals were involved in in those other studios and games? It doesn't say in this article, but yeah. Uh, yeah. So who knows? I mean, like, like I, I'm, I'm, it's always great for a new studio to start building up and, you know, but, but all these, like this, Sony has been partnering with a lot of these studios like Haven, right. And uh, I'm trying to remember the other ones. Well, actually, is that the one they bought? I don't remember. Ha Haven's the one they bought. The one yeah. they bought. But the, and there's a couple others where like they're new studios with talent who have worked on significant games, right. But they haven't put anything out themselves. And, who knows how that's going to play out? You know, everyone's super excited about Callisto Protocol, and it does look really great. 
But that studio hasn't put out a game yet. So, like, just, you know, you got to keep that in the back of your mind. Like, I know a lot of those people have worked on games. But just remember, it could be something, you know, that doesn't go the way you expect. Yeah. Yeah, we shall see. Um, yeah, but I think, yeah, when it comes to uh, this acquisition, it looks like they're they're trying to go into the mobile space more. So we shall see. Yeah, which, I mean, look, yeah. obviously, everyone, everyone has. Nintendo did it. You know, Microsoft has a few. Yeah. They're getting King, you know, when the acquisition from Activision Blizzard King. So, yeah. You know. Yep, we shall see. All right, next up, uh, Sony is notably going to be absent from Tokyo Game Show, the 2022 schedule. So, of course, we're going to be uh, we're going to be uh, giving our predictions next week on our episode next week uh, for Tokyo Game Show. So, yeah, stay tuned for that. But uh, we're going to talk about Tokyo Game Show a little bit here, and then I also have the information regarding the streaming schedule for Tokyo Game Show. So, we're going to show you that as well. So uh, the article, of course, from uh, PlayStation Lifestyle is below for all of you uh, uh, viewers. And uh, also let us know in the comments about the previous uh, Weekly News Beat topic story we just talked about. Uh, do you think uh, PlayStation is really trying to position itself to take over more of the mobile gaming market? Let us know in the comments uh, about that. So uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, it, what's, what's interesting about this... Um, that they're not going to have a presence. They're not even going to have a general exhibition area. Uh, they're not even listed this year. And that's a big thing because uh, the times that I've gone to Tokyo game show, PlayStation's exhibit area in the exhibit hall that they're in, in Makuhari is huge. You know, it's like the biggest exhibit area and they're not even on the exhibit list this year. They're not even going to be there. The only thing that basically they're going to have a presence in is the indie games corner, uh, which is usually the indie games corner is in the adjacent building. You have the main building in Makahari Messe that houses, of course, uh, the you know the biggest exhibition area. Uh, there's like uh, three or four rooms, I think it is. And then after that, you go outside and there's another smaller building there. That's where the indie exhibits are. And that's the indie games corner is where PlayStation is going to be. I mean, for indie yeah. games, but that's it. That's, that's the, yeah. And is, is the, Microsoft going to fill that, that Sony space? They, they just like, I, yeah, okay. They you might. guys are gone? I think so. Thank you. I think so. <laughs> yeah. Well, Microsoft has always been in the main exhibition area, but it's in like the corner. It was like a smaller area. Whereas PlayStation would take up like exhibit hall A would be like 80% PlayStation. I hope, I hope Phil yeah. doled out that money to take to take that yeah. big real estate area in, in the yeah. show. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, yeah, this is is really interesting that that PlayStation is not there. Obviously, there's the rumblings about and Burley. I think you were talking about this before too. That uh, uh, later this month, there's going to be another state of play. So yeah. I think I think they're setting that up for some big announcements, uh, perhaps at the state of play. And that might be one of the reasons they decided to skip Tokyo Game Show, as well as they've skipped Gamescom, as well as they've skipped the the E3, uh, uh, you know, streams and all of that again. And obviously Nintendo, when it comes to Nintendo, they're usually never at TGS anyway. Uh, so, but uh, yeah, it's kind of, yeah. I uh, For me being out here in Japan and being, have been to Tokyo Game Show. Um, yeah, I think this is, uh, you know, little surprising that they're not going to have any kind of presence except for indie games i don't know uh what are your thoughts on this uh carl i'll go ahead and let you continue you were you were saying some stuff about microsoft you know maybe expanding their exhibit space in there which they probably will be but uh, i don't know what are yeah. your thoughts man they had a good size exhibit at uh, gamescom and that seemed to be a pretty big success for them there was a lot of you know talk that came out of that they had Good interviews. They had a lot of demos set up for all these upcoming things, and there's there were smaller things. Obviously, you know they don't have their AAA is ready to go, but um, yeah, I think they still managed to have a pretty good presence there. So if they can do that again in Japan, and you know you want to get as many people as possible over there, you know, talking about it. Yeah, 
uh, do what you can. And it's, I mean, you know, it, it would be great if they could have something bigger there. I don't know, you know, Redfall and Starfield, you know, what, maybe let people go hands on at an yeah. event like this, but I don't think that's going to happen. No, no. Uh, let me go ahead and also show all of you uh, video viewers, of course, the official streaming timetable here uh, for Tokyo Game Show. So, of course, uh, Tokyo Game Show goes on from the 15th of this month through the 18th. So the 15th and 16th will be, of course, the, uh, of course, days for the media. Uh, and then the 17th and 18th, uh, Saturday and Sunday, will be public days. But they are limiting the amount of people that can go into public, uh, the public days this year uh, because of the, the COVID pandemic. But anyway... You know, I'm going to say Sony's not there because they knew this, they were going to increase the prices of their PlayStation console. <laughs> so they're like, you know what? No, nah, we don't want to have to answer this. Everybody's going to be asking questions about I that. I don't know. I'm sure they made this decision before they, they came out with the release, the press release about raising the prices of the console. I don't yeah, know. How long ago did they make that decision, huh? Yeah. It, I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, it would be great, Carl, to be a fly on the wall in the, know, right? you know, in the, in the Sony corporate headquarters in Tokyo. But uh, yeah. yeah was, I, I, like, I think Sony is more just on this because they've been going to less and less events as the, the last couple of years. I think they, they are feeling like, why do we need these events? If we do enough marketing and just say, Hey, state of play is coming in two days online. It, we can get it trending on Twitter. We can get this going. We can get content creators all up in a fizzy and get them all ready and doing all the marketing for us. Yeah. So I think Sony is just like, why are we spending this money? Why are we going out here? We do a quick little stream, put out a YouTube video, what whatever, and there we go. We've got we've got our event done. Yeah. yeah. And it's yeah, like, yeah, just like a abandoning of old ways. And you know, there's, there's something to be said for trade shows. I mean, people, people like those. A lot of people like your enthusiasts go to those things and yeah. you want that audience. They're the ones who are oh, going to yeah. talk the most about the, your product. Yeah. Uh, there's yeah. other reasons, of course, you know, industry people there, you know, press there. There's a lot of things that you can get out of it. And I just don't, I don't like, Sony is like, seems to just be burning all of their sort of goodwill. They're like, we built all this goodwill up. We've had it sitting there, yeah. you know, it's yeah. doing nothing yeah. for us. They're like, well, it's not nothing. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, yeah. it, you know, we have, we have this reserve, like, sure. I guess we can burn some, we can raise prices. We can skip E3 forever. Now we can not go to TGS. We can skip yeah, I think, now. just I it's think like, whatever. I think they're just taking a page out of Nintendo's book. It's like, just continue to do state of plays like Nintendo does Nintendo directs and things like that. And, you know, and just save money that way uh, in a sense. And, and I just want to say at Tokyo game show, what's interesting about the PlayStation exhibit, it's usually not their first party AAA games that they're pushing on the showroom floor. It's mostly mm -hmm. third party games. The last time I was there, they were heavily pushing call of duty and battlefield. Yeah. Oh really? <laughs> yes. I was, yes. I was I was gonna I was gonna say what what in all honesty for holiday time this year what do you have yeah. that you're gonna push and I don't know like I know God of War uh, Ragnarok is going to be huge but I don't know yeah. how well in Japan that's gonna be huge. Yeah. Uh, so it's like other than that because that's that's the only big thing that I know that they have coming in the next couple of months. Yeah. Unless like you could count let's say for spoken because that is early next year. Yeah. And it's like, but yeah, well, you I, should be able to have for spoken there. Yeah. But the square, 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 square might be having that because that is a square. I mean, yeah, property. I guess square is going to have all these like small, like Valkyrie Elysium. Um, yep. Maybe yeah, Dragon which comes Quest out on 3 the 29th, HD. Yeah. yeah. Tactics Ogre, <clears throat> the remaster. Yeah, when it comes to God of War Ragnarok, I mean, uh, we had the news also that uh, new gameplay footage has been released uh, to, to show. And so who knows, maybe uh, if PlayStation's actually going to be doing that state of play this month, you can bet you that's probably going to be in there. So, But uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, yeah, it was Call of Duty and Battlefield. And then uh, next to that was the, the big Monster Hunter uh, displays. You know, they had, a, you know... 
you know, monster hunter was big that year the last time i went so but uh yeah um surprising and of course the timetable here for the streaming of course as you, as you can see here on the 15th at uh at 6 p.m we have the microsoft event so it's going to be about an hour so we'll see what comes of that capcom has a couple of streams uh, on uh, thursday and friday and all of these ah, times capcom. here yeah, all of these uh, times here, I just want to note are uh, J Japan standard time. So, uh, yeah, all of these times, uh, of course, for all of you out in the West, whether you're in the UK or in Canada or the US, uh, yeah, uh, these uh, these times here that we're showing are uh, Japan standard time, uh, where where I am out here in Japan. So, yeah. well, you know what, Tony could have you know Callisto Protocol and Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah, because they have marketing partnerships with those. So sure. why, you know, those are big games. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not for what Sony is doing, like of of abandoning these shows. Like I, I, I do like how just releasing a state of play every once in a while and just getting those out. I do like those, but I, I feel it should still be at these events. Like I would like to, because some of these events, like E3, TGS, are events I would like to go, and I would love to see Sony there and see their booths and see what they're doing and all that. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's go ahead and move on. So our next story, uh, <laughs> good old three four three Industries. Yeah, they're, uh, they're they're having a kind of a you know difficult time at the moment. It seems. Uh, especially when it comes to split screen co-op. Uh, obviously during the time of Halo 5 Guardians, of course, uh, Bonnie Ross, that was uh, the head of 343 at the time, she was saying that, uh, you know, it's going to definitely, because they, it wasn't in Halo 5 Guardians, uh, they, had, they had axed it from that game as well. But there's, she says that she, at that time that split screen co-op would be in every other Halo game that comes in the future. Uh, well, obviously, that's not going to happen now. So uh, Halo Infinite Split Screen Co-op has been canceled as studio focuses on live service. So uh, I just want to read a little bit of the article here from uh, GameSpot here. And uh, they're saying that in order to improve, quote, uh, this is from 343 Industries, quote, in order to improve and accelerate ongoing live service development, and to better address player feedback and quality on life updates, we have reallocated studio resources and are no longer working on local campaign split screen co-op, end quote. And then, of course, Phil Spencer also, he made comments saying that, you know, most people now are playing online when it comes to co-op uh, instead of, you know, like couch, couch co-op, excuse me. Uh, but still, the promise was made in the past that this would be a part of these games moving forward. And obviously they're looking at the live service aspect of things now more than the uh, couch co-op. Uh, but, uh, I, and I've heard rumblings of, uh, you know, uh, Halo fans out there saying that 343 should be scrapped and that Halo should be moved over to another studio now. I don't know, but uh, Carl, I'll, I'll let you start with this one. What do you think of this news, man? I mean, it sucks that they've canceled this, the local co-op. I mean, you know, there's, there's definitely not a good thing. I, I don't know why. The, the reasoning they gave is, you know, resources. I mean, they're a large studio. I don't I don't know. There is there some other real problem with that feature? Uh, you know, based on the way the campaign is designed, I don't I don't really know. Yeah, they're still doing the the network co-op, you know, uh, which you know, for we're just you know maybe not to just be negative here, they did announce that you know coming for November is Forge Beta, the campaign yeah. network co-op, yeah, yeah, a free thirty tier battle pass. Uh, yeah, it's called the maps. Winter Update. Yeah, Winter yeah. Update on two November. Maps, yeah. Match XP Beta. Wait, match XP is like a big deal because people are like annoyed that you don't get XP like for matches. And also, season three Echoes Within coming March twenty twenty three. Uh, yeah, with the bandit that rifle. But you again, like, like that's yeah. that's like a delay. So like, yeah. that's also negative. But you know, they they have a bunch of things coming this year, um, significant things. 
Uh, you know, Ford should be a big deal. Yeah. Um, you know, they're, 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 yeah, they're having problems. But I mean, like, it's a live service game. I, mean, I personally don't care that much. I think what they did at launch with the campaign, I really enjoyed. Uh, I know people, people keep getting up in arms about this, but like, you know, just move on. Like, if it's not for you, it's not for you. Like, move on. Like, st- there's there's an audience that that still loves Halo. Yeah. And this this version of Halo is good, and there are people who, uh, those people, if they have things that they want better about the game, yes, listen to them. But like the people out there who who just want to like pile on on like all the bad news of this game, like just forget it. Like, why are we why are we bothering with it? Like, do we talk about like other live services like 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 Marvel's Avengers? Everyone was like laughing at them, and and now no one really talks about it because if you're still playing, like that's fine. You enjoy it, and you're you're happy to hear whatever they say. I don't know, you know, when they're gonna finally announce they're shutting down, but yeah. You know. Burley, your thoughts. Go for it, man. I'm going for a rant here. <laughs> I'm sorry. You put this on the back of the box. You sold this for full price out there to people, telling them this was coming. So you know what? Give if you if you're not going to make it, <laughs> you refund those people. I'm sorry. Like this was something I was actually looking forward to because I had some plans that I was going to have someone and we we're going to do some local co-op. Because I know someone that doesn't have an Xbox, doesn't have Game Pass and all that. So this this shot some plans I had. I'm sorry. Like, if it was just a game that you got with Game Pass, I wouldn't be so angry. But they did charge. And they had those high dollar special editions and all that. And it's like, if you put it on the back of the box, you're going to do this and charge for it. Then do it. They put it they're putting their effort into the free-to-play aspects and all that because they want to charge for more for micro transactions all that i i I would i'm i'm guessing and i'm making a bold statement on that i i admit but that's what i i feel but this game has dipped in its player base so many times so they're trying to think what they feel is the best effort but just Mm -hmm. come out and say that just say we don't think many people are gonna do local co-op we want to put our efforts here because the player base has been dropping and all this and that, and we feel feel this is better for our effort. Stop pussyfooting around. Just say what it is. The, yeah. like, I think the, they probably the, don't want to just be uh, like mean to those people who are like, yeah, sorry, <laughs> like you don't matter, sort of. Yeah. Because the people who are still playing obviously know that like those things that they're probably shifting those resources to are more important. If you're looking yeah. at like as a live service, yeah. yeah. But you 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 can't just they they have watched this so badly, in, in my opinion. The, the 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 launching not coming out with a lot of features, and then we're slowly piecemealing. We still don't even have full network co-op. It's like a beta, and all that, and it, the game is almost a year old. Mm-hmm. Getting to that one year, it's like this is just sad. Now, what like, do you guys what do you guys think of the future of Halo when it comes to three four three? Do you think there could be a possibility that, you know, F- Phil and and others, you know, at the top say, okay, well, things are just not working out. We're going to move Halo to another studio. What do you guys uh, think? Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> Halo's reputation for a lot of people like me, it's damaged. If I see three four three is working on it. I'm only going to do the, co- I'll be completely honest. I'll do the coverage I have to for the podcast. I ain't going to, I ain't going to spend too much time. Give it to some other developers need to be in there. Like I'm sure three through or three will work on it, but they will not be the main developer. Yeah. I mean, Carl, I, I, there might be maybe a significant leadership change, uh, which hasn't happened yet. I don't know yeah. why they haven't done anything. Uh, cause I think there's plenty of justification to do so. Um, you know, I'm not, obviously, yeah, we don't have, we're not privy to any internal information. Uh, there's been small leaks here and there, but nothing specifically to say that like things are a nightmare over there. I mean, I think it's just, it's, it's just a game project that didn't go the way it was planned. And can you say that like they're trash for that? I mean, 
what you built, the basis, the base core of what you built is actually very good, right? And mm -hmm. that's, so I wouldn't say that like 343 should just be forgotten about. <laughs> They're not a good developer. Like yeah. the, the campaign open world thing, I actually think was awesome and I loved oh, it. Yeah. Yeah, so did I. And the core gameplay of of Halo Infinite is, I mean, from what I hear, from the general opinion of CC, is the best it's ever been. Yeah. Uh, so yes, it's not. It doesn't have the features people want, and the live service is the the big problem here. So mm -hmm. I I don't I don't know what will happen with. I think three four three of course will continue to make Halo games. Do I think maybe someone else will make a different type of Halo game? That's possible. I'm I'm interested in seeing that. I, I, Halo is just like it, it's it's an old first person shooter, and like what place do those have in today's world right now? It's an arena shooter. Like you know, if you look at who else is still around, Doom. But yeah. Doom makes just a straight single player game now. They don't do anything mm -hmm. else. Like they, there was multiplayer, but like no one cared about that. It was never something that they put a lot of work into and effort. It was kind of anyone, if you talk about Doom 2016 or Doom Eternal, it's it's a single player. Yeah, exactly. So like, yeah. I get that things look really bad, but I feel like they're fighting this sort of like uphill losing battle of like trying to make this old style arena shooter something that people will still really engage with today. When like that How about audience... Destiny? Destiny. Des okay, Destiny is a yeah. great example because yeah. Destiny's PvP like shoot is 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 garbage, right? Like nobody uses the mm -hmm. that aspect that like that yeah. those type of modes in that game. Like no one cares about that. That's not why people play Destiny. Yeah. So and your all your competitive like first person shooters now are all you know battle royales. Yeah, that's that's where the market is. Like yeah. when that Valorant comes out, Halo, and, yeah, yeah, Halo Apex has one. And, yeah. Right, and that's going to come out eventually, supposedly, like in the works. But that's being worked on by, I think, a different is it certain affinity? One of the other studios is supposedly working on that. And I, I don't know, I don't know where it goes. Did they focus on specifically making maybe just a single player experience at 343 and they, you know, concede the rest to this Battle Royale thing that's going to happen in the future? Yeah. I don't really know, but I'm looking forward to the next big campaign thing they do because I'll play that. I'm oh yeah, that. no, definitely, <laughs> definitely. All right, but let's I, go I, ahead. I, I, go th ahead. I think the marketing team is gone. A lot of people in marketing are gone from this because that's gonna because they're marketing the way they. Well, their marketing campaign and... got screwed because of the delay. <laughs> They yeah, marketed yeah. this, you know. Yeah. There was like bag of chips and drinks and all these codes <laughs> yeah. out like. Well, like oh, uh, you know, a year before the game released. Hey, monster! So, it was yeah. on Monster Energy yeah. cans yeah, as well. Like, so yeah, that sucks. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to market okay. a game that's troubled too. You know, yeah. sure. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and move on. So uh, next up, uh, of course, uh, Call of Duty will become part of Xbox Game Pass uh, on launch day in the future, obviously. Uh, but it's going to launch on PlayStation on the same day as well. So basically, most of the of or all of the Activision Blizzard games uh, are going to be coming on the same day to PlayStation as well. From uh, and those come came from the mouth of Phil Spencer himself, Uncle Phil, of course. So uh, yeah, I'd like to know your guys' take on this. Uh, uh, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and read a little bit of what uh, Phil said here, and this is from the IGN article. But he says, "Quote: We intend to make Activision Blizzard's." Much loved library of games, including Overwatch, Diablo, and Call of Duty, available in Game Pass, and to grow the, uh, those gaming communities uh, by delivering even more value to players. We hope to continue growing Game Pass, extending its appeal to mobile phones. There you go, another another nod to mobile here, and any connected device. Uh, so uh, then, you know, of course, he also talks about that it will be coming, of course, to PlayStation, and uh, you know on day one as well. So it's not like they're trying to take it away from other, you know, uh, uh, others like PlayStation or Nintendo or whoever, you know, or, you know, uh, it's, but what's interesting about this is, um, you know, that he's talking about overwatch. He's talking about, you know, 
he's talking about the Diablo games. He's talking about Call of Duty and everything. But future or games like, for example, Starfield, they're not going to go to PlayStation Day One, you know. And who knows what other new IP that might come from Activision Blizzard in the future would go to PlayStation Day One. So that he didn't talk about there. And we also got the news this week, also uh, just a couple of days ago, that the UK is having some problems with the uh, the acquisition deal, uh, and uh, you know they're a little skeptical as to you know Microsoft and uh, you know and and putting everything on Game Pass. Um, they're you know having some uh, you know uh, questions about all of that, so it's probably going to go into further, uh, you know, negotiations and it's going to take a little longer for things to, to process and go through. But, uh, anyway, about this, uh, you know, becoming, uh, you know, Activision Blizzard games going to game pass as well as onto PlayStation day one. What do you guys think of that? Uh, Burley, I'll start with you, man. Go ahead. Yeah. The, we're not, we're not surprised that call of duty would go on, game pass because that is, is a giant thing that is a giant selling pill for game pass because like it like it or not call of duty sells a lot and it is a huge popular franchise so yeah. you hear it going to game pass a lot of people that are on the xbox side that have only an xbox yeah. they're like oh i don't have to pay set 79 90 dollars here in canada i can just yeah. pay my game pass subscription and I have my Call of Duty. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah, uh, I mean, what he's what he's saying basically is he he wants the games to go to as many people as possible, and yeah. he's not talking about not only just Microsoft, but to PlayStation fans and in like whatever games go to Nintendo as well to to Nintendo fans. Like Cuphead is already on on uh, Nintendo. So, uh, so for, for the Nintendo Nintendo yeah. version of Call of Duty, the cartridge is it just going to have the title <laughs> screen of the game? That's all that's on that maybe, cartridge, maybe, Who <laughs> or knows, just a, a link to GamePass.com. <laughs> well, hey, they they did they did like uh, what was it? Uh, I'm trying to remember Killzone. They did Killzone on PlayStation Vita. I mean, and it it actually was pretty good. So who knows? Maybe they'll make a, a you know a, a handheld version that's actually you know quite decent. Who knows? But, <laughs> but I, have I, you, I, I, you, you, if you know nothing of Call of Duty size, they, they're they're so ballooned. Uh, of how course, big it's like a hundred plus gigabytes. Yeah, of course. I know. Oh, I mean, uh, oh yeah. yeah. And, and I think the next you, Call of Duty is supposed to be like on two discs, right? At least. Yeah, yeah that's so. that. They had that for they had that for uh, so, uh, quite a few of them. They've had the two discs. Yeah. So, so I mean, but, but. I, it's but, no surprise they're keeping it for PlayStation as well, because like as I said in the past, that your PlayStation it makes a ton of money on PlayStation. You don't yeah. pay all that money you paid for Activision Blizzard to not yeah. get it on PlayStation. Do <laughs> you yeah. still want to get all those sales? Yeah, well, this this puts the ball definitely in PlayStation's court. Like, look, you know, he's basically Phil Spencer saying, we want as many people as possible to get these games. So mm -hmm. Activision Blizzard games will still go to PlayStation. So PlayStation, what are you going to do about your games? Are you going to keep them just on your platform and not give them to anybody else? So basically, the ball is now in PlayStation's court. When it comes to all of this, and I, I, I think it's a, you know, it's a brilliant move on his part, you know, uh, and it makes uh, it makes Microsoft and Xbox uh, a very appealing, you know, uh, console for a lot of gamers to get uh, moving forward. You know, oh, yeah. so, I don't know, Carl. What are your thoughts, man? Yeah, I mean, September first was the phase one deadline for the. UK uh, CMA, yeah, to sit and and you know as as it seems as people uh, who are familiar with that that market that body, it's going to go to phase two, which apparently is pretty standard over there. Oh. Uh, how how far into that it goes? They've given them like another. I saw the the actual wording said I think it was another five days to like submit. Well, right. Microsoft is supposed to respond to. Yeah. That. And, you know, now we're seeing these stories about, you know, yeah, we're keeping, 
we're committing specifically to like keep Call of Duty on PlayStation, you know, day and date still. And there was a some sort of leak about or talk about how they had that deep talk with Phil Spencer and um, Jim Ryan, yeah, and the sort of commitment that they made back then to when this was initially announced of, that they were purchasing Activision, mm-hmm. that they were committing to keeping Call of Duty on them, this console past the original uh, existing marketing deal, right? That they wow. have with Call of Duty. And we heard something about that a while ago because remember there was that story about how like, oh, Phil had a phone call with, you know, uh, Jim Ryan or something like that. And right. so, yeah, clearly like they, this is something that they intended to do from back then when they said, when Phil said a long time ago after the, you know, acquisition originally was announced that they, they want to, like the wording was something like we, we intend to keep, you know, Call of Duty on PlayStation. Like they were serious. They weren't like just, right. you know, right. they, they were, they were much more specific, specific now. Yeah. But even then the language of saying like they, their intention to keep it on PlayStation, they specifically said PlayStation. Yeah. And this is because the, if you, that, if you look at the wording of the decision from the CMA, they are very specifically talking about Call of Duty. They even mentioned Game Pass, but like, they're worried. They, it's almost like they almost. It's almost like you were listening to Sony directly if you read mm-hmm. some of that stuff because they, <laughs> they seem to be echoing exactly what Sony was saying. Yeah. Um, but maybe that's the only real counter argument. So like that's what they wrote because I I was actually looking at the if you looked at like gov.uk you can see all of this information and hmm. if you look at other mergers and the phase one decisions they pretty much all say like we think this could be you know, anti-competitive for blah, blah, blah. Like every one of them says the same thing. So it doesn't, it's not like they're, they're saying that this deal isn't going to happen because of this. It's just like, we have yeah. to give a reason why we're deciding to go to phase two. Yeah. You know, and here's Microsoft coming out and saying, look, we're, we're not doing what you think we're going to do. Yeah. And, but I have to throw this kind of one little, little nitpick in here though. The UK the majority of gamers in the UK are PlayStation gamers. The majority. Yeah. And that's probably so, why they might yeah. have a more PlayStation angle. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that the, that the government body should be like, right. oh, yeah, right. we're going to, like, we're worried about the PlayStation uh, ability to sell consoles. Like, we're worried that it might lower their business. They might not be number one anymore. Like, that's not what a government is supposed to no. do. You're supposed no. to have that competition. Yeah, that's right. You you tell 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 Microsoft <laughs> not to let the deal go through. Sorry, it's just uh... <laughs> talking to your buddies in the UK. Yeah, the governing board, yeah. they're all PlayStation players. Yeah, so it's like a... So they, they they have to go through me. <laughs> no I'm kidding. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and move on to the, the topic of the show. So our topic of the show is uh, the gaming industries continual consolidation so uh of course uh, we had uh another big story this week of course uh, quantic dream that uh, was i think they were like a second party studio to playstation for a while of course when they made you know they made of course you know detroit become human uh netease games basically purchased uh quantic dream so uh we have more consolidation in the industry obviously we talked earlier about uh, savage game studios uh, being bought by PlayStation, PlayStation probably wanting to position itself more into the mobile market. So we've got all of these video game development companies and you have like uh, Tencent, you have Sony, you have Microsoft, you got all, you know, the, the, the big the big ones out there purchasing all of these, you know, these studios, the uh, big studios, just small studios and everything. So uh, let's talk about this a little bit. Uh, I mean... Obviously, this week it was more focused on, uh, you know, like with PlayStation in the mobile market, but uh, you know, like NetEase, of course, uh, you know, buying up Quantic Dream that was pretty big, as well. So, I mean, what do you guys think? I mean, uh, how, you know, who do you think's gonna finally win out with all this consolidation, uh, you know, positioning and, uh, you know, in in this gen- let's just kind of stick to this generation. For the next maybe five, six, seven years, uh, and uh, you know, 
is it going to be more by the end of this generation? Is you going to see more mobile development studios bought up by like Sony and bought up by Microsoft or, or even Nintendo, for example, or even like Tencent and the Chinese companies? What do you think? Carl, I'll start with you on this one. What do you think, man? Uh, boy, I mean, you know, obviously your biggest tech companies, right, are going to be the ones who are going to be on top because they have the, the most influence, the most money. So like Apple or Amazon, you think? Well, and Maybe Microsoft, that more? right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Tencent. Mm-hmm. And Sony, I mean, are they, you know, they are a big tech company. They have a lot of stuff in the tech industry. You know, they also yeah. do computers and TVs, you know. Right. Not like they don't do those things as well. Right. Um, <laughs> So you, it's, you guess you're looking at like EA, Take Two, Ubisoft, right? Who are yeah. sort of your biggest players out there, who are still independent in the West? Yeah, yeah. The and then yeah, in the, in the in the East, you have Capcom, you have Square, you have Sega, Amco, Sega. Yeah, those are all big. Will they go anywhere else? I don't know. Like I feel like I would prefer to see them consolidate together. So, like, maybe Sega, Bandai Namco sort of joining forces or, you know, Capcom, Square Enix, you know, any, any of these, those type of companies maybe. Because I don't, I don't really prefer to see all of them being owned by either Microsoft, Sony, Tencent. Um, I think you know, Tencent, Am- yeah, Tencent's going to be big, though. I mean, because they're making a lot of mobile games now as well. So the, these Chinese companies are really heavily into yeah. mobile. And so I could I see know. the uh, out here in the east, especially I could see the consolidation uh, between Chinese and Japanese studios, particularly. Yeah. What know, kind yeah. of sentiment would you say there is in Japan for a Chinese company like Tencent buying something big, like let's say Sega? You know, w- would that be something that Sega that maybe not? Well? In in because yeah. Sega is one of the big big ones, uh, but the smaller developers they probably because. Tencent is huge and they've got tons of money. Um, they probably wouldn't have much of a, a gripe about about being consolidated. But when it comes to the big ones like Sega or like a Capcom, maybe not. Because okay. you have that animosity and obviously the, the political situation out here as well. But yeah, that, that's you know, what I would yeah. think would be the case. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean, you got... Um, that rumor recently, which turned out to be not true, that was it Amazon that was supposedly yeah. gonna yeah. buy EA. But yeah. like, I'm not surprised that you something like that is being said because I think Amazon is going to make a big play possibly one day, maybe even Apple. Who knows? You know, or Someone's Netflix. Gonna, even Netflix. Net, I mean, you know, Netflix. They ain't doing. They don't. They can't do that. They, they don't have get the capital. Bought. They will get bought by someone like like a Microsoft. Really yeah. interesting. Okay. Yeah, they will. Um, so yeah, that's it. Burley, your thoughts? Yeah. You know who doesn't win? Us, the consumers, uh, necessarily on all these mergers, because now some of these companies they had these passion projects that they wanted to do, and some of them, like the companies, I'm not saying like all, that Microsoft and Sony are going to do this every stu- with every studio. They may have an awesome, great idea, but they're like, mm, we've tested the waters with something similar before, and we don't think that's going to hit the numbers. We need you to hit. We need a $5 million plus game. So we'd rather you go into this kind of market for us because that's where we see the, the gaming market going. So we'd rather you do that. And since we own you, you do what, what we say. Dance, dance, dance for us, monkey, <laughs> dance. Um as for which company, like, I think Tencent will own the most pieces in just a different companies because Tencent for the last little while, besides just buying full things right out, right, they've been putting money in owning more ownerships in, uh, in all these different companies. Yeah. Um, it's easy to kind of just say Microsoft will own the most because they have the most of like, if you go by the big gaming companies, they, they have the most money. Because Sony, as much as Sony, like PlayStation makes a lot of money, the other aspects of Sony are failing. I don't even think they have their computer division anymore. Like they, so it's just like they're some consumer electronics. They still have the Vio division, but that's, that's, yeah. Is that actually still a thing? 
Yeah. And they, they even still make mobile phones. Probably in Japan, right? Yeah. Yeah, they do. But, uh, I mean, yeah, it's nothing to what it used to be. I mean, a long time well, ago, Fujitsu was on top. You know, first it was NEC, and then Fujitsu became really popular. And then the Vios became very popular. But now it's like, you know, it's... Hold on. Or, you know, so, or is Sony going to just Microsoft. buy a bunch of... Mo- yeah. Buy a mo- bunch of mobile studios. Remember how they had that PlayStation phone about like yeah. 15 years ago? Yeah. Where you could buy play- PS- PS1 games and play them on there? Yeah. yeah. Maybe they're bringing <laughs> that back with all these mobile yeah. studios. Yeah. We, we, we know everyone loves mobile games. Yeah. Bro, and- they're making an Uncharted Endless Runner. Okay. And that just- I'd actually play for a bit. Like, I wouldn't <laughs> spend money, but. Yeah. I would actually play it. I'm, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you know, in a country that doesn't get much, you know, uh, news coverage, um, but they're big on, huge on gaming as well. And their studios, the smaller studios um, that you don't hear much about, but especially in the fighting game scene and, and uh, in the uh, role-playing game scene as well, South Korea. I mean, uh, South Korea is a huge market for gaming there. I mean, uh, we're starting to see some of their their stuff get bigger now. Some of their studios yeah. come out. Yeah, and especially in the the you know like uh, esports. I mean, uh, South Korea is huge in esports. So, uh, so yeah, we shall see. But I mean, they're always like in the you know in Evo and everywhere else. They they have teams that are you know like with League of Legends and everything else that they're they're you know they're pretty dominant. So. But uh, yeah, we shall see. Um, yeah, that that yeah. game that I've been following, the Lost Eidolons, yeah, which is that sort of um, Fire Emblem inspired uh, you know, turn based tactical RPG. There, that's a South Korean studio called Ocean yep. Drive. Yep. And they, this is their first game, and you know, but they've worked on all those people have worked on a bunch of like you know South Korean sort of mobile stuff. Actually, I'm not sure if they did mobile stuff with this studio, but. They again, they're one of those studios who has experience with all that stuff, and they're trying to do now a bigger single player thing, which is which is great. I love to see more of that. I like to see that direction instead yeah. of going to mobile. I want to see these yep. devs who put a lot of time into mobile stuff are like, hey, maybe we should do something bigger and not mobile. <laughs> yeah, but they're <laughs> also in the MMO scene as well too. Uh, uh, there's yeah. uh, there was Boo. one game. Uh, yeah, I know for you. Boo, yeah. so, but for some people out there that might listen or, or watch our videos, they're probably into MMOs. And uh, there was one game that I, Burley and I were talking about. Uh, I think it was like later or actually last year sometime, Burley. Uh, it was called Crimson Desert, I think it was called. Um, was that's another. Er, that was early in the year, I think. Yeah, it er. was. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's an, that's developed by a South Korean studio as well. So. But uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Um, I think just for the next few years, at least through this whole generation, we're going to be getting a lot of news about consolidation and, you know, a lot more, you know, acquisitions. Um, So we shall see. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, EA, like you said, Carl, EA is still play, whether Apple or like Amazon, you know, still tries to to go for them or whoever. But yeah. yeah. You know, and, you know who see. buys these companies, it is a big deal about what's going to happen. And Burley said there's the possibility that, yeah, maybe smaller projects, passion projects go away. But we know that's not true for Microsoft. Yeah. <clears throat> because we've seen that already. They've greenlit a bunch of things. You know, Bleeding Edge mm-hmm. is a good example. Passion project didn't work out, but, you know, they it got made. Grounded is another example. Did work out, you know. Yeah. Yep. That's big success. Small, real small team. Pentiment, I think, is going to be another successful, if not like wildly successful, but like probably going to be a good game. That the smaller thing that that's going on over there, mm-hmm. um, and there's all kinds of uh, smaller things that they're going to allow, and that's because of Game Pass. Now you can't say that's going to happen for any of these other companies. We don't know. Although it maybe seems like Embracer is very much sort of like, yeah, what do you got? Okay, yeah, we'll greenlight that. Sure. <laughs> I don't really know. It doesn't seem like yeah. Embracer Group is doing much for those studios yet, other than saying, yeah. we support your creativity. So maybe that's a good sign too over there, but not, you know, 
hard to say. Yeah. yeah. But probably by the end of this generation, probably Tencent will still have the majority of studios yeah, of the of the big three, I think. We shall see. Yeah, I, I don't. I mean, they yeah. don't. How many do they really have? I know, like, I, I can't tell you. I can't name like. I know they have Riot. Right? Yeah, that's the line. They have yeah. Riot. Right. Uh, <laughs> Riot Light. Riot Stream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they have yeah, a yeah, lot yeah, of yeah. revenue because because of the things because you know League of Legends, for example, is like really huge, right? But like, yeah. Then I mean, look, we're, we're always thinking about it in the console space, and like Tencent's probably never going to be that big in the console space unless they decide to yeah. make their own console one day which yeah they own a part of from soft well well that's the they thing do. about china in china yeah. they all they have these hybrid style you know console units and all but uh, i think was it tencent and sony who increased some sort of uh stake into from soft recently yep yeah yeah that that's another bit of news that, that came this week too about uh, from software and, and some of the shares. But yeah, everyone's favorite company. Yeah, hey, they need they don't need to be bought by anyone. They're just like everyone's just like giving them money to yeah. you know, without buying. Them. And and, like, they, and, right, and, cool. and 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 no matter what, like because I I've had this because whenever whenever I have streamed or talk about the game, you can't you can't even say anything negative about like Elden. Like I criticize that you can't do crossplay, and I get you get people. Oh, you just don't understand. I'm like, no, this is a game in 2022. You're charging full price. Crossplay should be an option. I don't care. You could if it's Sony's fault, I would be from software. I'd be blaming Sony. But like, you you can't criticize anything on Elden Ring with the hardcore fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost it's like a kind of like a cult following, right, Burley? Yeah, in a sense. <laughs> oh. It's, it's, it's bigger than a cult. fighting game. It's, yeah, it oh, yeah. it's it's bigger than a cult. It's huge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So a gaming gaming cult, I should say. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that that was our topic of the show. So uh, yeah, let us know in the comments uh, about some of the the stories in the weekly news beat that we talked about. Uh, you know, uh, what do you guys uh, out there think about uh, Sony not uh, being present at Tokyo Game Show? Uh, about, of course, uh, Activision Blizzard games still coming to PlayStation on day one, even though they're also going to be going to Game Pass day one. Let us know what you think about that in the comments. And, of course, uh, with all the consolidation going on in the gaming industry, uh, how do you feel about that? Let us know in the comments. Uh, yeah, below. let us know who you, who you think big is getting bought next. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot yeah. of good choices out there, you know? Yeah, exactly. All right, so it's time for uh, our picks of the week. So, uh, of course, uh, each and every week, uh, myself and Burley and Carl, we uh, talk about, of course, our, our picks of new game releases that are coming out. So for the week of September 5th through the 11th. So uh, due to alphabetical order and the game that you picked, Carl, you are first again this week. What do you have for us? Wow, I'm first with Steel Rising. That's impressive. <laughs> starting with the s all right it's coming to pc ps5 and xbox series x so this is a current gen only game on september 8th this oh. is steel rising king louis the 16th autumn automata army is terrorizing the citizens of paris join the revolution as ages fight against this reign of terror and try to change the course of history and this is made by Spiders, who made, uh, was it Greedfall, I believe? Ah, it looks a lot and like Greedfall, for sure. Yeah. This oh, is okay. their take on a, on a Bloodborne Souls type game. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do like the setting, the, you know, in France and the, the sort of, the, all these automatons and the, the, the style <laughs> of them is really interesting. The character you play is, is really cool. I just like the, the sort of, weird sort of jerky movements of that type of uh machine it's very oh. cool yeah it's, it looks like some mannequin from a department store that's like fighting <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's interesting <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm always curious with these other type of souls like type of games and and I, I watched a video talking about uh, early impressions for this game and one thing i thought that's that stood out to me is that they have these um I don't know what they called it, but difficulty options, essentially. Uh -huh. uh, there was, they said there was a lot of customization in 
how you can adjust things for your play. So like you can, I think they said you can make enemies do, do less damage essentially, or, you know, trying to think of what other options, maybe you get more experience or I, I don't know, things like that, like to make it so that you can customize your play experience. So mm -hmm. it's not frustrating for some people who can't deal with that or just don't want to deal with that type of gameplay. Yeah. So, Carl, you're going to get the Marie Antoinette uh, cosmetic pack, right? Yeah, yeah sure, sure. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, Burley, you're up next. What do you got for us, man? Uh, so, what we got for me, my pick of the week is Temtem. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Temtem is a massively multiplayer creature collection adventure inspired by Pokemon. Seek adventure in the lovely airborne archipelago. Pelio alongside your Temtem squad, catch every Temtem, battle other tamers, customize your house, join a friend's adventure, or explore the dynamic online world. Coming Tuesday, September 6th, it's coming to PC, PS5, PS4, Switch, Xbox uh, series. And it also does work well on the Steam Deck. I have actually been playing this game for over a year in the early access I bought into this. Cool. And it it's been a lot of fun. Like, it's do doing stuff that I would like Pokemon to do. Like, the battles are much harder. Like, your your creatures have, like, a stamina meter. And mm -hmm. so every time they use their moves, like, the higher, more powerful moves use more of the stamina. Mm -hmm. So there's there are costs for you doing your battle. You have to really think of your moves and stuff like that. And it's nice to do the, the co-op and all that. And it uh -huh. is a free mmo you're not paying on like those monthly fees yeah so it's nice it's i, I actually make i've been considering picking this up for my playstation mm. okay <laughs> it looks interesting the one thing i i noticed is that the characters they very much remind me of me's from nintendo Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, God, I hate, <laughs> I just hate that. I, I just don't think the character models in this game look good. But other than that, yeah, I mean, this is interesting. All right. Yeah, I, 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 like anyone, if you're looking for uh, a Pokemon-like game that you're, you're a little dissatisfied with Pokemon's done and you're wanting more features and stuff, mm -hmm. honestly, check it out. All right. All right, so I'm up next. So next up for me, White Day, a labyrinth named School. A crush goes horribly wrong in this unique adventure game. As a boy sneaks into school to leave a romantic gesture for a girl he has a crush on, he suddenly gets wrapped up in a labyrinth, as there is more to the school he is in than anyone realizes. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I just had to pick something mm -hmm. kind of weird this week. Yeah. So, and of course I work in schools and so, uh, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, th I, th Coming... I think the, the moral of this game story is never have a crush on a girl. Always oh, yeah, just yeah. going to get you killed. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's already out on PC uh, and uh, it comes out on uh, PlayStation 4, PS5, Switch and Xbox on September 8th. Uh, in the U.S. and the U.K., so yeah, yeah, good stuff. Yeah, White Day. We actually oh, do. We actually do have a White Day here in Japan. It's on March 14th, and it's actually my son's birthday. <laughs> my son's birthday is on White Day. So on the image yeah. there, I see something I know Carl is going to love. It includes 30 plus. Costume DLC. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Look, if it's included, <laughs> I love it. That's all. I don't want to pay extra yeah. for costume. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, I agree. If if it's just free downloads and that I have to download them, they're free. Fine. Yeah. yeah. You're gonna charge me five ninety nine or ninety nine cents each costume. Yeah. <laughs> Go to hell. <laughs> yeah. All right. So those are our picks of the week for uh, September fifth through the eleventh. Uh, so uh, yeah. All right, so next up, uh, we're going to talk about uh, the PlayStation Plus Essential and then the extra and premium games for this month, as well as uh, Games with Gold on the Xbox side of things. But first, let's start with PlayStation. Burley, what are we getting for PlayStation Essential? All righty, for Essential, we are getting... We've got three different games. For, we've got Need for Speed Heat, uh, just for PS4. Uh, Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, PS4, and 
I, I'm going to butcher this name, Toeum, uh, a, a photo adventure for your PS5. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, yeah, Toem Tom is a game that I've heard about before. I think that's uh, yeah, yeah, like a a, a well liked in indie game. So that looks interesting. Right. I was gonna yeah. say I, I've heard I've heard good things about it. Mm-hmm. Is one one I've wanted to try. So mm-hmm. yeah, and the Grand Blue Fantasy is versus is is the fighting game version of like some. I think it's some mobile game. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it's an anime too, but it looks pretty yeah. cool in the video. You know, it's definitely something. You might be interested in popping on if I, if I had this, of course. <laughs> yeah. Need for Speed. Who need for Speed Heat. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say like I haven't played a Need for Speed game since like the PS2, and like I know they made some, like I know they made some great PS2 game like Need for Speed games, but it's like, eh. well, we'll, yeah. we'll see. Like if if this is the one I'm thinking about, I think this was the one. It had a decent buzz when it came out, and then it just. Six months after that game came out, you could ask someone, and they're like, "Oh, that game came out." And here is Toem, yeah. So, uh, yeah, all black and white. So, yeah. yeah. Ooh, diving helmet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Okay, so next up, uh, the extra and premium uh, for September Burley. All righty. For the extra tier, we got Deathloop. Yay! Finally, finally going to play that now. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's a fun it's a fun game, and go check out our extra take on that. Yep, on yep. the YouTube. Yep. Uh, Assassin's Creed Origins, Watch Dogs Two, <laughs> Dragon Ball Zetoverse Two, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Spirit Fair Farewell Edition. Uh, Chicory uh, Colorful Tale, which I know are. are uh, community member and Patreon backer to wheel is all all yep. about. Yep. Shout out. That's to supposed to be a good one. Yeah. yeah. I've heard about mm-hmm. that one. Yeah. 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 Uh, Monster Energy <clears throat> Supercross for both PS5 and PS4. There you go, expat. <laughs> yeah. It, it's it, yeah. But I was just just gonna say, it seems like PlayStation seems to be copying what Microsoft's doing on the Game Pass side of things because I mean like half of these are already on Game Pass. Exactly, that's <laughs> exactly what I was gonna, like uh, Assassin's Creed Origins. It's on Game Pass now. Uh, Watch, Watch Dogs Two is was, now on yeah. Game Pass now. So I mean, you know, they're just like copying, you know, what what they're putting on there now. It What's Dragon Ball Universe? I don't know. Couldn't tell you, but I wouldn't yeah. be surprised. Yeah, yeah. Um, Deathloop, that'll be on Game Pass <laughs> for sure. At some yeah, point. when that exclusivity deal ends. Yeah. yeah. So. Already, uh, that we still for extra. We have Alex Kidd in the Miracle World for PS5, PS4, Rabbids Invasion, the interactive TV show for PS4, Rayman Legends for PS4. Please go check out Rayman Legends, it's an awesome game. Uh, and Scott Pilgrim versus the World PS4. Yeah, that is for the extra tier. For the premium, you have Siphon Filter 2 for the PS1, uh, the Sly Cooper Collection. The PS3 collection that they did. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got Sly Cooper Thieves in Time for PS3. So that's all the streaming. Uh, Bentley's Hack Pack PS3. Uh, Toy Story 3 PSP. And Kingdom of Paradise PSP. Mm. So. I love those if, Rayman games. I, I wish they'd make a new one. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. No. Yeah. I, I, Ray, Rayman Legends. Oh, yeah. It's such a fun game. Like I play, yeah. I bought it originally on the Wii U yeah. because originally that game was actually supposed to be a Wii U exclusive, and then, and then I think it got became multi-platform. Yeah, yeah. The Alex Kid I've always wanted to try because I've never like I've played little demo, uh, like well not demos, bits of them on other Sega collections. So it'd be interesting to try try this yeah. new Alex Kid. I think it's just like a remake of the original. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That you know, that premium lineup is bad, man. <laughs> I, I don't I'm not say it's or shite. It's, it's not it's, it's not like inspiring. It's just it's just like whatever. It's like here's here's what we got. Here's some, you know, okay classic game or even good classic games, but like I don't think any of those ones are people like, yes, that's that's the one I'm waiting for. I don't know uh, about the premium. 
strategy, Se man. Se Siphon Filter Two was is is a good game, but like that that that's your big one out of the ones in premium. That's the one I'm probably gonna try. Like I would have thought Death Loop would have been in premium, not an extra. Hmm. You 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 think you think I'm that? To think because... that they should just get rid of premium and it should just all be included in extra, and they should just drop that extra price because. This stuff, honestly, I think it's going to start looking like Nintendo Online. Hmm. I don't. I don't know if it's going to go that bad, but <laughs> I, I, I do. I do. I do get your point. It is not, and the the Sly Cooper collection. One thing I have to say: there is a known thing in here because I I do have this on the PS3. I picked this up a few years back. There is a known bug. Uh, I, for when one of the bosses of the, I think they're called the Fiendish Five, a certain mm -hmm. one, you have to pay, play, it's a rhythm game, but the timing on the PS3 version is off. So you have to put it like before the button, because it goes like the Guitar Hero kind of thing, before the button comes near the section thing, you have to press it a few seconds ahead of time for it to mm -hmm. count because of the whole, the because it's off time. <laughs> You know, so, now, I was going to say about premium. Now, now premium is where you get the demos, right? Yeah. Okay. Do they have any new ones? I, I was just going to say that. Do what? What <laughs> demos can you really play right now? I mean, of, of uh, new the de games. The, de right the demos you do have. Uh, uh, last I checked, this was a couple days yeah. ago. Yeah. So uh, it's been longer have, than that for me, but yeah. <laughs> uh, Tiny Tina's Wonderland. Uh -huh. You've got that. Yeah. Uh, that's been you out got, for a while now, though. Yeah. Yeah. The Uncharted one. Uh huh. Two two hours of the Uncharted. Mm -hmm. Um. God, there's another bigger one. I'm I'm blanking on the name right now. But mm -hmm. yeah, no, it's it, it, it. Premium this month is bad. Extra, I, I think extras. I think we can all agree extra is a decent lineup. Mm -hmm. Even though, like, some of the games are on other services like Game Pass, you do have at least a decent variety. Yeah, and yeah, that was a that lineup. Well, I was going to sure. also say about premium too. I mean, one of the what they've been pushing about premium is all of these, you know, uh, classic games here that you're supposed to be getting. And yeah, I don't know. There's still yeah. so many classics they could be pushing. Yeah. That should be should be on there, and we right. do. Um, Red Dead Redemption Two is leaving. Yeah. So and here you see siphon uh, filter. I mean, you know, yeah. yeah it's like siphon why don't you just throw throw Looks most terrible. Yeah, just <laughs> just throw most of these games on on premium. You know. Well, it's throw like you're playing a 1996 on. game. <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Well, like, like uh, some of some of their decisions for the here, like, yeah, the siphon filter, but yeah. like, where where are you getting the big names for Sony? Like, you you have dealings, and you like they because they still will sell the PS One classics of like the Crash Bandicoot, Spyro, and stuff like that. You need to be getting that kind of stuff because those a look good for their time and still look good today. Yeah, and those are like the classics that people honestly really want to play. But I mean, why would you play Crash and Spyro classic versions when they have the incredible, you know, yeah. remastered trilogies? Like, uh, as, as much as I like the, the Spyro ones, it's harder for me to defend, but the Crash ones, uh, the jumping is a little bit better in the original. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Pay extra just for that. Yep. And here's uh, Red Dead Redemption Two, which will be leaving on September twentieth. So, <laughs> and as you were saying, Carl, that soon, yeah. <laughs> soon, soon, yeah. But I, I have to yeah. assume it was already on PS Now or something, and it was. It was. It was on PS Now. Yeah. 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 But it just seems weird because they just announced this new, you know, rebranding of it all. But right. the, my biggest complaint with this lineup is that again. There is nothing new launching into the service. Yeah. Right. You have no stray, you know, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know Not what they month. should do? You, you know what they should do for at least the demo? 
add the big game that they've just released. Yeah. The the Last of Us remake. Add the two hour demo nah. for that. Yeah. Uh, no, Burley, you the, must pay. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm not. I still have never finished dollars. Last of Us. Yeah, I still have not. Bucks. I still <laughs> seventy. Do you know how oh, much that game sorry. is here? Ninety. Yeah, well, oh, hey, okay, Canada. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> no, because it's got that next gen tax. So if I wanted Last of Us PS5, it's over a hundred dollars. That's just the base <laughs> oh edition. God. So wow. uh, just play the one you already have. I know. Right? A, <laughs> no, I'm saying or the one from the service, PS3. Right? From the PS3, put you, get out your PS3 I, I, and play I, the PS3 I, version of it. It's still I, the I have game. the PS4 4 version because I got that when I bought my PS4. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm well, saying it was like six what, months there's, later. There's, I mean, it's there's, like there's, the, came out. there's no yeah. two. There's no two hour. Make a two hour demo for Last of Us. You want? You should, people no, you're to, right. You should. That, that should be one because you know what? It will help sell a few copies. Because people, yeah. I know so many people that there are people that have bought it on blind faith because Naughty Dog can do no wrong. Or there are people that are like, well, you know what? I'm just going to watch other people. Yeah. If you're going to, if you've, a uh, big selling point of your service is these two hour demos. You're going to make, make Naughty Dog and be, make Neil Druckmann say, hey, we let you get away with a lot of stuff you shouldn't have with. Last of Us 2, um, about a certain scene. That's all I'll say. The, the well, sex let's see. scene. Let's see if God of War <laughs> do, Ragnarok's do the... first two hours come in November. To for Oh, that won't happen. <laughs> they, should. Never... Okay. they should. I, I they agree with you. the premium service, yeah. <laughs> I, I agree with yeah. you, but God of War, yeah. they won't do the first two hours. They may do a two-hour demo, but it won't be the first two fucking they hours. They should. They should, man. I, See, I, I, yeah, I think I the real problem with the premium service and the demos, right, is that the people most likely to get the premium service are your hardcore fans, right? Right, right, right. And they they're going to buy that games game already. And... They're yeah. already going to buy it. If yeah. they're paying extra to play, you know, well, that's not on there, but, like, Crash – with the bear jumping, which you know, let's say that they did, like, you know, they're paying, they're paying to play Siphon Filter too. Uh, they're probably already buying, <laughs> you know, God of War Ragnarok. They don't need a two-hour demo. It's like it is a weird thing. Like that should be maybe part of Essential. Yeah. At this point, I don't know why. Like I think premium should just be chopped up and put into Essential for the demos and classics in extra. And just please, just get rid of it. Just stop. It's, it's like. Okay. It's a weird thing. I don't like it. Well, speaking of uh, just get rid of it, stop. Uh, from games from, with gold. What? Yeah. So what? Uh, <laughs> some of us have been saying, yeah, for for uh, quite a while now. So games with gold for uh, September. Carl, take it away. What are we getting then? All right, we have your Xbox One releases. God's Will Fall, September first through the thirtieth, and then you have Double Kick Heroes. That's the sixteenth to October fifteenth. Then you have an original Xbox game called Thrillville, September 1st to the 15th. And then Portal 2 on Xbox 360, September 16th to September 30th. So, uh, yeah. I mean, Portal 2, that's a, that's a very good game. Yeah. Like that's it. a nice, yeah. nice. If you're going to go out on, uh, this is the last, by the way, uh, Xbox 360, 360. Yeah. game coming to the mm -hmm. service. I don't know if that means also original Xbox games, but I would probably assume they're not going to do that yeah. after this, but Portal 2 is a good way to go out. Um, and then we will see October what happens. If we're going to go into something better, or is it going to indicate that we're just going away? This is just good, all going away. <laughs> uh, I, I, if you want my honest opinion... This is them slowly killing the service off because it'll go down to two Xbox One games. They can't do that. No. <laughs> Sony did it. That, that they're gonna do it. You know. You know it, Carl. Sony did that three though. You cannot. There's no way you can get away with. They will be butchered if they do just but, two but, crappy how many, like how, mediocre how many people, Xbox One games. How, how many? How many people really care about games with gold? And, and the thing is, it's just the the PR hit, right? That's that's the worst part. Of that, that, they'll take they the PR that. hit on that, but then remind you with Game Pass that you can get in so many ways. Get in for a dollar. You have X amount of thousand games you can try and play. Yeah, I don't. I don't think. 
I honestly think what they're going to do is you're just going to get four Xbox One games. And, and I don't think that's like a, a, a weird stretch to ask for because they're not putting out like would they had gods will fall and double kick heroes. I mean, like these games are probably not costing them very much to put in there. Right. So like you get two more of that same quality. I think that's more of a, if they do that, that feels like a stop gap to like eventually getting rid of it. If they do less than that, I mean, I think everyone's going to be like, what the hell are you, why, why are we even continuing at this point? Just, just, like you said, push everyone to Game Pass by literally getting rid of the service and converting everyone to Game Pass. Well, they they, they got to do the slow kill. You can't you can't just instantly do it. So it I think hasn't been slow seven. already, really. <laughs> no, times? it's gonna be. <laughs> well, it's been <laughs> slow, but like they 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 have to. I like honestly, I would have thought they would have just killed this service by now, yeah. or said yeah. by December thirty first. That's we're done in December. But they they are they they're going the molasses slow method yeah. of killing it. I, I I tend to have to agree with Carl on this one. They're going to probably just go for Xbox Xbox One games. Yeah. So what is everyone here? Everyone in the comment section, <laughs> we'd love to hear what you yeah. all think. Yeah. Should they Am just I kill right? games with gold or? or yeah. Next? <laughs> yeah. We shall see very soon, October. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. uh, you know, I had one thing I, I wanted to ask you guys uh, what you thought this, the implication of it, because we, we saw it briefly. We didn't really talk about it. Death loop on, on the PS plus extra. Yeah. What, what does that mean for its possible release on Xbox and game pass, which the one year mark is somewhere around, I think it was the 14th or 15th. Yeah. Yeah. Around there. Well, basically what that means is they get it out for those that are in the extra tier. And so, <laughs> so then uh, if, if they, if these gamers also have an Xbox, they won't play it on game pass. Yeah. That's probably the yeah. reason. Yeah. Do I mean, we, because the exclusivity, means... the exclusivity deal, I think ends in November. Right. I mean, because it's a, it was a year exclusivity deal that they had signed. I think. Uh, yeah. It was yeah. September release they, though. Yeah, it was a September, September release. release. Okay, so yeah, it was a. I I think I think they're. So when does it come to Game Pass? In uh, what October? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Well, yeah. I I think yeah. I think there's the possibility Sony is still in talks with them, trying to work something out. Maybe see if they can extend extend the uh, contract on that. I mean, there's no way that Bethesda yeah. would. And or under Xbox now would give them additional exclusivity time. Never say never. That's all. never saying yeah. never on that. Uh, but just, I mean, just never. You, could, you could get they could squeeze. Hold on, they could squeeze out a couple extra months. So early next year, you have a big thing. Microsoft. We now are getting Death Loop early twenty twenty three. Which I think might happen regardless, right? Because I, I don't know that they want to just release it immediately they went whether or not it's even ready right like is is there an yeah. xbox version ready to drop this month yeah i don't know like did they build it is it is yeah. it optimized like i don't know maybe but but <laughs> going back to what i was saying i mean their their thinking is and, and we talked about this during you know when we were talking about the you know the the playstation games you know like you got assassin's creed origins going to it now then you have Watch Dogs 2. And of course, those games came to Game Pass. So they're copying those. So they're trying to mirror what Microsoft is doing with Game Pass and to try to get these games on there. And probably that's what they're doing with the exclusive games that they still have contracts for. Okay, let's get, let's get, you know, Deathloop onto Essential or Extra, I'm sorry, so that people will play it on PlayStation instead of play it on Xbox. Because, you know, if it comes to Game yeah. Pass the next month, hey, I've already got it. I'm a I'm an extra subscriber on PlayStation as well. I'm just going to play it there instead. You know, so, absolutely doing that. I mean, yeah, I mean, I that's, would, that's their thinking. Yeah, if we're if we're remembering the Resident Evil Village uh, leaked contract, mm -hmm. there's probably language in that deal that they get, you know, first pass at a, screen, a subscription service for the yeah. game. 
yeah. to put it on a service. So and you know where it's going. Took that. Yeah. But the question really will be like, you know, when Microsoft is able to talk about this, which I assume is after the year is over, yeah. you know, will will they say, hey, guess what? It's also on Game Pass same day. <laughs> or will we will we not hear anything? Or will they say it's coming to Xbox later? You know, who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, uh, yeah, I'll bet you a case of spiritual opium right now, Carl, that Resident Evil Village is going to go to that extra. Yeah. Before oh, before yeah, it yeah. ever comes to wow. Game Pass. Yeah, it's going oh, to make sure. sure I'm not. Yeah. I'm talking oh, no, about no, 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 no. We'll, we'll get the two hour demo. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. for, for Resident Evil, they'll troll us with the demo. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, Ghostwire Tokyo will probably be on the S Plus Extra as well. Yeah, yeah. But I'll bet you a case of spiritual opium, Burley, that that God of War Ragnarok, the first two hours, the, it'll come out on the, 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 the it'll there'll be a demo for it mm. for extra and premium members or premium oh, members. Wow. So I think you better get that case ready to ship. I, I, I've got it ready, baby. I've got it ready. <laughs> I mean, it's it, 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 Sony's. Sony's got to come up with you know perks and whatever to 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 challenge you know. Uh, have you seen you know, Sony Microsoft strategy any way they can. lately? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Right? Their perk is pay us more. We're worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully then... they'll come. Hopefully they'll come to their senses, uh, you know, and, and actually do that. But uh, yeah, I mean, you guys will probably be right, and they probably won't have any kind of demo whatsoever for it. But who knows? We'll see. But anyway. With that, so those uh, have been, of course, the uh, the PlayStation Essential Extra and Premium games, as well as games with gold. Um, so, yeah, um, let us know what you think of these games uh, in the comments as well. So, And some programming notes. Uh, of course, uh, after we record uh, the rest of uh, this episode here, we're going to be doing our episode three reactions to She-Hulk, Attorney at Law. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. Uh, we're going to be bringing that to you, as well as uh, Star Trek Lower Decks. Of course, the least dangerous game we're going to be reviewing and giving our reactions to Season 3, Episode 2 of uh, Star Trek Lower Decks. So stay tuned for that as well. That's a really fun series, and uh, we're glad it's back. So, uh, yeah. And as well, of course, uh, during the week, we'll be uh, recording House of the Dragon. And we'll also be uh, uh, trying to squeeze some time in to uh, record our uh, episode one reactions and review of Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power. So hopefully all of you out there are getting a chance to watch that on Amazon. So, uh, yeah, we've uh, I've watched the first episode and it, it was really, really good, I thought. So uh, looking forward to talking about that with you all. So. All right. So uh, it's time to talk about what we're going to be playing this next week. Uh, I'm going to try to continue. Um, like I said, I'm, I've been busy. My daughter's leaving on Monday. So probably after that, I will try to get back to some gaming, uh, try Immortality, some more of that, uh, Immortals Phoenix Rising, uh, play a little bit more of that, uh, and probably Deathloop because <laughs> it's coming to because it's coming to uh, PlayStation, uh, the extra. Yeah, so uh Looking forward to uh, to trying that I because I haven't played it yet. Burley, I know you've played it, and uh, Carl, I don't know, I don't think you've played it either, right? Because you're yeah, so you don't have your PlayStation yet. But uh, yeah, not really my kind of game. But yeah, so but uh, yeah, I'll, you know, on PS Five when it comes in there for the uh, the extra service, I'll go ahead and download it and uh, start playing it. I've been looking forward to playing that. So, all right, Carl, what are you going to be playing this next week? Uh, I mean, I'm going to try to do some more. Expeditions Rome and Soul Hikers too. Cool, cool. Burley, how about you? Uh, got <clears throat> continuing on God of War for streaming, but also be doing uh, streaming. Thank you, Konami. Uh, they sent me a copy of the uh, Cow TMNT, the Cowbonga collection. I played nice. a little bit on the Steam Deck, and it does work well on the Steam Deck. So cool. I'll be streaming that, and right. also continuing Fall Guys. My addiction, please help me. And triangle strategy. <laughs> All right. Set up All an right. intervention uh, at some point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> intervention service for Burley. <laughs> so, please, please help the man. Hey, at least I'm not spending money in the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. 
So, all right. So it's time to uh, get to our indie recording artist. So this week's indie recording artist spotlight is on Jane and the Boy. Jane and the Boy are a duo who work remotely between the U.S. and the U.K. Their style could be described as indie pop infused with singer-songwriter bops. From their album titled More, and the song is called End of Time. So this has been The Arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast, episode 102. I've been your host, Expat, along with my co-hosts, Burley of Burleyman Gaming and Turnbase Carl. We hope to catch you in the next one. So enjoy the music and uh, take care, everyone. We hope to catch you next week. So we'll be talking about TGS a lot next week. So take care, everyone. Peace out. It's a play.